Hi, this is Rachel, and today I wanted to look at the Kingdom Interlinear Translation and compare it with the New World Translation. And these are both publications of the Watchtower Society of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And what made me want to look into this is the claim by so many Jehovah's Witnesses that the New World Translation is really the most accurate translation there is out there, and that it's so close to the Greek and the original text unlike all the other versions uh, of the Bible that are widely available. So I want to look at some scriptures today, and these will all be a very brief overview, more of a bird's eye view than an in-depth view on any one scripture. But um, it's just something to get us thinking and to look at whether this claim is true or not true. This is the version I will be using, the 1985 Kingdom Interlinear Translation, and this is what it looks like. This version is not really available anymore. I don't think it's being published anymore, but it can be found online as a PDF. You can obtain the 1969, which was the first version, or the 1985, which is the one I will be using, as a PDF, and that makes it very searchable, uh, and it's very easy to download. It's free. And if you would like to have a hard copy, you can obtain one from eBay or any of these other used booksellers. So first, let's see what does this translation say about itself in its own foreword. This is the foreword from the Kingdom Interlinear Translation. Um, I believe the same foreword is found in the New World Translation. We'll start here. We offer no paraphrase of the scriptures. Our endeavor throughout has been to give as literal a translation as possible, where the modern English idiom allows for it, or where the thought content is not hidden due to any awkwardness in the literal rendition. In this way, we can best meet the desire of those who are scrupulous for getting, as nearly as possible, word for word, the exact statement of the original. We realize that sometimes the use of so small a thing as the definite or indefinite article, or the omission of such, may alter the correct sense of the original passage. So just to sum this up, basically they're saying that they're, what they've tried to do was give as literal a translation as possible. So they want to get as scrupulously as possible a nearly a word-for-word -word exact statement of the original. And again, further on in the foreword, close watch has been kept against taking liberties with text merely for the sake of brevity or shortcuts and against substitution of a modern parallel where the rendering of the original idea makes good sense. To each major word we have assigned one meaning and have held to that meaning as far as the context permitted. This indeed has imposed a restriction upon our diction, but it makes for good cross-reference work and for a more reliable comparison of related texts or verses. At the same time, in order to bring out the richness and variety of the language of the inspired writers, we have avoided rendering two or more Greek words by the same English word. For this hides the distinction and shade of meaning between several words thus rendered. Attention has been given to the tenses of verbs to bring out the intended description of the action, position, or state. As the reader becomes familiar with our translation, he will discern more and more the harmony and interagreement of our renderings in all these respects. So you can see here what they say is how many meanings did they assign to each major word? One? Yes, one meaning. And that they've been very careful with the tenses of verbs, right? This is what it's saying, they are saying about their own translation. And that we should be, we should become familiar with their translation to discern more and more the harmony and interagreement of these things. So this is what I had set out to do, and I wanted to look first at the scriptures relating to Jesus. Um, I will do another video after this about scriptures relating to the Holy Spirit and maybe some other verses, but we will stick with just this topic in this video. So we begin our look at John chapter 8, and there's a passage here where Jesus is giving a lengthy um, talk, and he is starting in verse 24 to say that if ever for not you should believe that I am, you will die in the sins of you. That's in the Greek. Oh, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with interlinear, um, the left hand side there's a Greek word, and underneath it the English words are there. And I've added the highlighting so that you can see which part we're looking at. 
And then on the right hand side, across the divider, is how they translate it in the New World Translation. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at verse 24 at the top of the page. And you will see that when it says, You should not believe that I am, this is translated, if you do not believe that I am, and that you use brackets, he. The brackets mean that this word is not in the original Greek text. And I appreciate the honesty there of putting in the brackets th because it simply says that I am in the Greek, and they are adding I am he. So if you look a little further down, therefore, uh, let's see, it's towards the end of the verse here. You should put up, put high up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. So what they have here is when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am, brackets, he. So there is consistency here between the way they translate I am, and then they change it to I am, brackets, he. There is a consistency there. But I simply wonder, um, what do you think that Jesus is saying here when he's calling himself I am? In this very same passage, Jesus continues on, and we get to verse 58, where Jesus says, I'm saying to you, before Abraham to become, I am. And, let's see, do they translate it with I am he, as they have done in the same very passage um, twice before? They say, most truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. So there's a definitely a change here. And... It's the same Greek words that are translated I am, um, simply as I am, but they have translated it, choose to translate it I am brackets he, twice before in the same passage, and now they are translating it I have been. So there is already a change in translation. And you have to think, why is there a change here? Um, Jesus is saying, uh, one thing to notice about this verse is Jesus says, before Abraham to become, he doesn't say, before Abraham to become, I became, I had become. He actually says, before Abraham to become, I am. And the Jews, after this, they wanted to stone him for blasphemy. So there has been a change here in the way that it's been translated in the very same passage. We go further on in John, chapter 14, verse 14. The Greek says, If ever anything you should ask me in the name of me, this I shall do. They translated, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So there's a me that's left out here. Um, because they don't want you to know. Why, why does Jesus say you should ask him? How, how will we ask him? Do we ask God in prayer? Is that what he's saying? He said you should ask me. And they know that it says that, but they omit the me and just says ask anything in my name. So there's a change here. There's an omission. Acts twenty twenty eight. It's talking about the ecclesia of God, the congregation of God. So God is the, uh, the person here being talked about. And it says, which he reserved for self through the blood of the own. And then they put brackets one. And it talks here, it says, the congregation of God, which he purchased with the blood of his own. And they do use brackets to show it's not their son. So we do have something that... Um, you have here the church of God, which he purchased through the blood of the own, his own blood. And then they add in the blood of his own son, because um, if it's God's blood, then what is that saying about Jesus? Further, another example, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We all know that Moses uh, and the Israelites in the desert were accompanied by God, by Jehovah, uh, in the cloud that followed them. And we have here that Paul is saying, for they used, I'll read from the Greek, and the very spiritual they drank, drink, they were drinking for out of spiritual, falling rock mass. The rock mass was but the Christ. So they have here two things. One is... Um, the word there that they translate rock mass, we all know that in the Old Testament, uh, Jehovah is referred to as the rock. And I wonder if this, if this word is referred to at all in the New Testament to Jehovah and if they consistently would translate that rock mass or rock. Um, I don't know. That's something you can look up. But I think the other thing I wanted to look at, but 
it says, but was the Christ. So it's saying here that Christ was the um, spiritual person who followed the Israelites when they were in the desert. And we know that before, from before, that Jehovah was the one that followed them. So what we have here is that it says rock mass was, and they change it to was to mint. Um, I'm not sure why they do that. Mint, I don't know. You can figure so we'll have to stop here because of time. Um, it will be to be continued. And as always, I welcome your comments and your questions. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.